Welcome everyone to our webinar on how to recover unpaid debts from customers and suppliers. My name is Paula Kumar and I'm a practice leader in the disputes team at Legal Vision. Before we begin, a couple of quick housekeeping items. So you'll receive the recording and slides in your email, so you don't need to take notes today. Um, you can submit some questions in the Q&A box and we'll answer them at the end of the webinar. And um, please complete the feedback survey after the webinar. For the next 48 hours, you are eligible for a free consultation with Legal Vision to discuss how we can help your business. Please provide your contact details in the survey at the end of this webinar. So today we're going to be discussing the impact of debts on your business, invoicing and early communication, how to be proactive in debt matters. We're going to look at can your debtor pay, the legal steps that you can take, the key takeaways and a Q&A session at the end. So first of all, the impact of debts on your business. So in 2023, the Federation of Small Businesses published a report called Time is Money, the case for late pay payment reform. And this really exposed the insufficient measures in place to hold big businesses to account. And it really called for a level playing field for smaller firms. They showed that in 2022, 52% of small businesses experienced late payment. 25% reported increased late payment. Small businesses in the southeast and east of England were more likely to experience late payments, and 37% applied for credit to manage their cash flow. This has come alongside a review from the Government Department for Business and Trade, who are also looking to improve arrangements to support businesses experiencing difficult payment practices. And there have been a number of proposals for the government to consider, and some of these have included imposing 30-day payment terms as an absolute maximum, mandating the Small Business Commissioner to investigate potential instances of poor payment proactively, and barring late payers from public procurement contracts. This review was concluded earlier this year, and we'll see if the government takes any of these proposals on board. These statistics really highlight the major cash flow challenges and financial burdens that small businesses face due to late payments and unpaid invoices. Effective debt recovery processes are crucial to alleviating these issues, improving cash flow and maintaining supplier relationships and really supporting the sustainability and growth of small enterprises. Sending invoices promptly is always going to be um, really important with debt recovery because it initiates the payment cycle. It sets clear expectations regarding the payment terms and the, and the due dates. And it really also maintains a good record keeping and ensures that the outstanding amounts don't accumulate over time. It's also important to keep the lines of communication open. So this is really about maintaining open and transparent communication about invoices and payment expectations, sending courtesy reminders when you can, and also potentially negotiating a payment if, if that's needed in the circumstances. And what you really want to address is any potential disputes or misunderstandings as early on as possible. Following up with debtors, now there are various ways that you can do this um, via call. So this is a good one to have a kind of personal phone call, it can be really effective in prompting action and it allows also a direct discussion about payment plans and you know when that you're expecting payment to, to be made. This should ideally be followed up by email um, because this is going to provide you with an email trail or, you know, to really provide documentation and that can be used in the formal debt process um, if, if it's needed later on. 
automation. Um, so you can use accounting software or automated reminders, um, and this can really streamline the follow up process for routine cases and kind of means that you don't spend an, as much time as um, you'd expect on debt recovery matters. And by implementing these proactive measures, businesses can improve their chances of recovering payments on time and reduce the need for costly debt recovery actions and maintain positive client relationships, which is what this is all about. And you can continue that relationship with the client rather than getting into a, a costly dispute later on. Proactive, or what do we mean by that? So for debt recovery, it, it is as important to, to try and do some proactive steps as much as you can. So obviously, clearly outlying the, the payment terms from, from the very beginning, perhaps requesting deposits, um, or there might be a milestone payment if it's a larger project. You could even consider offering an incentive like an early payment discount. Conducting credit checks on new clients to assess risk is something that we would also strongly recommend here. Um, and also setting internal reminders to follow up on overdue invoices so that you don't have to remember when invoices for each client are going to be due. Can your debtor pay? So this is really thinking about how much time and expense are you willing to expend on debt recovery? Debt recovery can be a time consuming and, and costly process, especially if it escalates to, to legal action, which you want to try and avoid if possible. So really you need to be weighing the outstanding debt amount against the potential cost of recovery. And that's gonna also include potentially legal fees, court costs, and also the staff time that's dedicated to the matter. For smaller debts, the expenses involved might actually outweigh the potential recovery. You want to really try and assess um, whether your debtor has the financial means to pay the outstanding amount. If the entity is actually insolvent, then it's going to be, it could potentially be futile and a waste of your resources to continue pursuing that debt. So conducting the due diligence on a debtor's financial situation early on in relationship and perhaps continuing on as well is also really important. Can you prove your claim? And um, well, what you need to really look at is do you have the solid documentation and evidence to support your claim so this is going to include having your contracts available any invoices email correspondence and really any other records which are going to establish the existence and validity of the debt if the outstanding debt is substantial the and the debtor seems to have the means to pay and you've got strong evidence to support your claim then it may well be worth pursuing recovery through legal channels on the other hand if the debt is relatively small or the debtor is insolvent or you lack the documentation to, to back up the the debt recovery then it might actually be more practical to write off the debt and focus your efforts on more promising recovery opportunities Ultimately, it's going to be a commercial decision. So, you know, you look at um, the cost benefit allowance, you consider the potential recovery amount, the likelihood of success and the resources that are being spent. So, you know, that's not just money, but it's also the time and effort that's really required. Um, and that's across the board. So that's that's your legal um, professionals and debt recovery experts, but also internal management time and, you know, credit control time as well. And consulting with legal professionals or debt recovery experts can provide valuable guidance in assessing whether a specific debt should be pursued or not. Now we're going to have a look at the legal steps that you can take. 
So I'd, I'd say always start with a friendly email and um, reminding them that payment is due. And this is a really important step if you're trying to maintain a business relationship and you want that relationship to continue, despite the fact that they might be late payers. Um, and this type of reminder is a good one that can be automated and that's going to reduce the time that you're spending on, on chasing payment. You also want to be trying to consider potential payment plans at this point. However, if you've got a debtor who's not paid their invoice and despite you sending initial reminders and follow-ups, the next step is going to be issuing a formal letter of claim. And that's the typical next step in the debt recovery process. Um, and at that stage, we would suggest that you engage either a solicitor or a debt collection agency. Well-crafted letter of claim, um, which is that next step, is going to prompt action from the debtor. And if necessary, it's also going to serve as documents that you might need for any debt recovery proceedings if it continues to, to be unpaid. Key elements in a letter of claim. So if you have a, a debtor who is an individual, then there's a pre-action protocol for debt recovery, which you're supposed to follow. And that includes um, you've got to provide certain information within the letter and there are some forms as well that need to be sent. Um, otherwise, you, you provide a letter of claims going to generally just provide the details of the invoice invoices um, some supporting documents. It's going to give a solid deadline for payment. Typically, that's 14 days for businesses, um, but longer if it's an individual, you're looking at 30 days under the pre-action protocol. And then you're also going to assess out what the consequences are if they don't comply. So that's either going to be that you take court action or potentially follow the statutory demand rate. Looking now at statutory demands. Um, so this is a, a creditor can issue a statutory demand um, if the debt is more than £750, um, if the debtor is a company. For individuals, it's a lot more, it's £5,000. And a statutory demand is, is really a, it's a formal legal notice um, requiring the debtor to pay the debt within 21 days. Um, if they don't, then they face potential winding up or bankruptcy proceedings if it's not paid. It's not a court document, so there's no court fees. Um, it's only to be used whether, where it's an undisputed debt. So where debts are simply not paid because at that time they don't have the money or they're just trying to delay payment. If there's a dispute about the quality or type of services or goods that you're providing them, then you shouldn't be following the statutory demand. You should be following the court process. Statutory demand is served by a process server normally. And so you have a formal um, affidavit or statement um, to show that it has been served in, in the correct way. And it's it really is a powerful tool that quite often either ends up in the debtor paying or it starts the, the conversation, at least if, if previous attempts haven't worked. So it really is that powerful, effective tool. Court proceedings. So this the first step after you've sent your letter of claim and either you get a response or you don't get a response. If you've got a response um, and it has dis disputed the debt, then this is the process that you want to be following court procedures. Um, so effectively you issue a claim um, and that's gonna be stating the details of the debt um, and the kind of recovery that you're seeking, which is gonna be the payment of the, the debt and interest and costs as well. Um, and then that claim is, is served on the debtor and they have 14 days to either file a defence or an acknowledgement of service. If they file an acknowledgement of service, then that extends the deadline and they get 28 days in total to file a defence. 
if if they don't file any defence, then you can apply for a judgment in default. If a defence is filed, then the claim just proceeds in the normal way for court proceedings. Enforcement options. So if you have a judgment in default because the debtor hasn't put in a defence, or you have a judgment um, because the claim's gone all the way and you've successfully won, hearing's been in your favour, um, and the debtor then fails to pay the judgment, then you can take enforcement action. So now we look at the various ways um, that you can enforce a, a debt. So the first one is a statutory demand. So if you remember, I said that statutory demand can only be used where there is not a dispute. But where you followed court action um, and you ultimately get a judgment in default or uh, a judgment from the court, they see that as the matter being effectively resolved. So on at that point, you can issue a statutory demand. Um, other options are a writ of control or warrant of control, and this is authorising a high court or a county court bailiff um, to seize the, the debtor's goods for sale. Charging orders, and so this is where a debt is secured against property, and then that can lead to an order for sale. Third party debt orders, so this is where um, money is frozen in a bank account and it can also intercept money that is owed to the debtor by third parties and make its way to, to you instead. Attachment of earnings. Um, this is where you get a regular deduction from salary. Can only apply to employees, so not to self-employed. Um, and employers are legally required to comply with that. So our key takeaways for, for debt recovery matters and, and how to recover them. So unpaid debts can ultimately have a significant impact on your business, so you should really be taken seriously. And you really should try to um, have proactive prevention strategies in place, um, which is going to involve prompt invoicing, having clear contracts or terms and conditions, and have communications, be transparent, be open, have those communications with your debtor throughout. Be ready to escalate your debt recovery claim if it's appropriate. So consider demand letters, statutory demands, and the legal process that we've explained. Before you do all of that, always be aware of the cost benefit analysis before embarking on a legal claim because the last thing you want to do is throw good money after bad. Consider getting legal advice to ensure that you have your client agreements in line um, and you might also need advice on whether or not to pursue a claim. But that concludes the, the main part of our webinar you might find our publication useful, um, which is a, a general guide to UK business disputes, um, which you will be able to um, access by scanning in the QR code. You might also be interested in our upcoming event, um, which is preventing employee competitors, how to protect your business. And this is being held 19th of November, 11 o'clock. And we're going to answer your questions shortly. And while you take some time to submit them, we'll take a minute just to, to talk about Legal Vision's membership. By becoming a Legal Vision member, your business is going to get unlimited access to our full team of specialist lawyers for all of your business as usual legal needs, which means it's really like having your own in-house counsel for a fraction cost. And our team can assist with unlimited document drafting and reviewing of business contracts, unlimited legal advice consultations, and unlimited domestic trademark registration, and much more. As a Legal Vision member, you won't have to worry about the cost of lawyers ever again. Think of it as having your own in-house counsel. We'll take care of all the business as usual legal work, and you can focus on running your business.
To learn more about how membership can help you, you can request a free consultation when the survey appears at the end of this webinar. And now we'll go to answer some of your questions. So the first question um, is, are there any time limits that apply to debt recovery? Um, so there are some kind of general time limits. Um, the first one is just a general kind of, six, you have six years from the date of the invoice to um, to actually issue a claim if that's um, the route that you want to take. So you want to do it within that period, but no one is really going to wait that long to have your debts um, satisfied. In terms of statutory demands, um, there are some time limits within that. So when you serve a statutory demand, the debtor has 21 days to pay, um, but also there's 18 days where they are able to make an application to set it aside. And going on from that, um, once a debt statutory demand has been served, you the next step really in that process is to go down the winding up route or the bankruptcy petition route um, and you really want to be doing that within four months of service of the statutory demand um, or you might have to start the process again and serve a new statutory demand. Looking at the next question, um, how can a business negotiate a payment plan with a debtor? Um, there's various things that you can do here. So the first thing I'd say is try and prepare before you have that conversation with the debtor. So this is really kind of looking first at, at the debt itself. Um, you know, how old is the debt? Um, what's the amount? What kind of communication have you had with the debtor so far? And also, what are you prepared to settle that what's the kind of minimum amount that you're willing to accept as as an offer to resolve it also I'd probably think about is this relationship that you want to continue so if it's a if it's consistent late payer are you willing to maybe extend the payment terms a little bit um you know if it's a good relationship um or you know is this if this if they're a consistently bad payer you know they're months over um over terms and you know this is places quite a large burden on your business and then you know you might want to be thinking to get out of that relationship but of course then you have to consider um the contract terms whether you are permitted to terminate the agreement and normally that would probably fall in within the material breach depending on the circumstances of it um, so other other things that you can do, um, communication. So, you know, the first communication that you have with them, you, you want to be as open as possible to express some willingness to, to find some mutually agreeable solution. Um, and I'd also, you know, you want to find out what are the reasons for the non-payment. So, you know, is it because they are waiting on payment from somebody else? Um, is it because they are in financial trouble or is it because actually, you know, they've been having problems with the goods and services that you're providing um, and is this going to end up in a dispute? That's going to also inform the process that you take later, um, whether you are going to be able to go down the statutory and demanding and um, statutory demand and winding up process or whether you would be going down the court proceedings process. Um, and then you think about the options that you potentially want to offer them. So, you know, these could be something like a, a lump sum um, at a discount, potentially. Um, you could consider setting up a payment plan. Um, so over a fixed period, um, you know, they pay certain amounts. Um, or alternatively, it could be a payment holiday. So you might say, look, take one month, two months to sort your business out, get payments. And then after that, you know, we're going to expect this amount um, either as a fixed amount or as installments. Be really, really clear and specific about what you are asking for. And I'd always say follow up in writing, especially once you have confirmed the terms of your agreement with them 
and then beyond that monitor it closely so if there are gonna if there are any missed payments even after you've agreed the terms then you know make sure that those are addressed immediately potentially you might be able to resolve it very quickly or if they've you know breached the terms of the agreement then you might want to be following up um and take some legal advice on that the next question what businesses sh uh, what records should a business maintain to support a debt claim uh this is all the really relevant documents to the dispute so first off it's Hopefully you have a contract or terms and conditions in place in writing. Um, obviously, if there's a verbal agreement, it's still going to be binding, but it's more difficult to prove. Um, so anything in writing is going gonna, is gonna to help. Um, if there have been any variations to that agreement as well, make sure you've got that. Um, obviously, the outstanding invoices, important to keep those. Um, any proof that you have that the goods and services were actually delivered um, and how the client responded to that as well. You know, did they send an email after the goods or services were delivered and, you know, talking about how brilliant they were or how they've satisfied exactly what they've been asking for. Um, and then in terms of other documents, it's, helpful to have a statement of account um where the payments of you know if it's a long-term arrangement several invoices outstanding and it shows the payments and the exact amounts that are outstanding as well and then all communication make sure you keep all of it so emails any kind of messages whether that's you know whatsapp text message whatever um any more kind of formal correspondence letters um, about the debt, so reminders and also responses that they've sent to you. So that's that's all the time that we have today. Um, so if you've got any more questions, then submit them um, within the um, survey that you complete at the end. Um, and if you want to learn more about our membership, then also complete that. Um, we really value the feedback that you give to us. And thanks so much for, for joining us. And we'll see you again soon. Thank you.